Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to the 51st Xamarin Android tutorial. So this is just going to be a quick demonstration of how to debug our application wirelessly. Okay, so most of us, not unlike myself, use our phones that are plugged in via the computer from a USB cable. Okay, so what I'm going to show you how to do is to actually not you have to use a USB cable and simply just debug your application as normal, but do it wirelessly through your LAN. Okay. So the requirements are that you have to have your device connected to the same network that your computer that you're writing your code is also connected to. Okay. So if you're connected to your network, some with uh, Wi-Fi, then just make sure that your computer is also connected to that network. Okay. They're that same LAN. Okay. So, and the next thing, of course, you're, you're going to need your IP address that your device is connected with. Okay. So the emulator is going to demonstrate how to do that by and the most common way is to go to your settings and find where it says wi-fi and click on that and then also click where the the actual uh network that you're connect, you're connected to and then this will be your ip address right here okay so i'm obviously not going to be using the emulator since the emulator is uh since it's virtual it's it's always connected wirelessly of course as always so i'm going to be using my personal device to demonstrate uh what it should look like through command prompt when you're entering in ADB commands, okay? So just something that's really cool. I mean, you know, in a wireless kind of world, you know, it's always cool to just be able to do something without a wire and not have it in the way when you're working with your applications. I use it pretty often and uh, I find it helpful. So I decided to share this with you guys. So here's how to do it. So now that once remember your IP address and once you have that, we can actually just kill the emulator because we're not gonna do that anymore. And you're going to want to get your SDK location okay so your android sdk you need to get that location and the easiest way is to go to tools options and go into where your sdk is xamarin and then if you get change you can actually just copy it over here so once that's copied you can go into your file explorer another way you can do it is just do tools android and then android adb command prompt and then you can start writing your commands right there but let me show you the other way. So if you, now that we have that directory copy, we can paste it, okay? And then we wanna go into platform tools and ADB, here's the application that we're looking for, okay? So once we're in this directory, just simply hold shift while you right click. So shift, right click, and then open command window here. And this will open the command window in this directory, which is where we want to be. And the first thing we wanna do is we want to list the devices, okay? So we can do, we can do ADB, that, uh, space devices and it'll say list of devices attached nothing okay so there's nothing attached right now which is what I expect since there's nothing is attached let me go ahead and attach my phone and then now I have attached my phone as you can see right here and my computer has not recognized it so my, my phone right now is actually attached with a USB cable okay so what I can do now is devices ADB devices and my device is now listed okay so all um, so far so good now what we need to do is we need to restart ADB in TCP mode, okay? So the way we can do that is do ADB space TCP IP in the port that it's gonna be on, which we'll do 5555, okay? So this will restart it in TCP mode, which basically says, hey, ADB, look for some connections via TCP, okay? Now what I can do is I can do ADB connect, and I'm gonna put in the IP address of my device, okay? So this is gonna be the IP address that is that's given to it via uh, uh, that, that it is on the LAN. Okay, so make sure that you go into Wi-Fi like I showed you a few moments ago, get that IP address and put it here. Once you do that, it will then connect. Make sure you have your Wi-Fi on because I don't think mine was actually on. So once I turn my Wi-Fi on, then it connected. So now all looks good. So now that it's connected through, through the LAN, I can do ADB devices. And then now notice that I have two devices, okay, which are the same device, but it's connected in two different ways, all right? But I only want to connect, this is this is through USB and this is through the through TCP. So I only want to connect to that. So what I'm gonna do is that now I am safe to actually just simply unplug the device, the USB cable from my device, which I'm gonna do now. So I've now unplugged it. Now if I run this command again, notice that that is now gone and now I'm only connected through through IP, okay? So now that that is, that is done, what I can do is I can come into to Visual Studio 
and actually I can actually run it just like normal okay so I'm gonna be able to so if you are getting some kind of um, you might have to, like some weird errors or something you might have to reboot Visual Studio once you have Visual Studio rebooted go ahead and find your device on this list and run it and this is going to this is going to run the uh, toolbar application, which I did a few videos ago. So, but in any project should be fine. And if it does take a while to install, that's because uh, it's a, it's got to install some a few things, like the if it, if it installs the like API or the mono shared runtime, uh, it might take a little while the first time. But after that, it's actually really rather quick. Uh, my device actually is already running the this toolbar application. Okay, so we can stop it, run it again to make sure. Notice that it's build succeeded, waiting for device. It's installed the package and it is now deployed. So it's, it is rather quick on my land. And do do take note that this this feature does not guarantee to be to work on all devices. So if it isn't working on your all your device, unfortunately, it it may be just because it's not supported by ADB. But uh, if it is, then congratulations because of the fact that uh, it's it's pretty cool. I mean, once you get it connected, now you don't have to have your USB in the way, and you can kind of just be a few distance from your computer and still be able to to work with your app. Now, if you want to go back to USB, what you can do is open back up command prompt in that same directory. And what you can do is do, if you notice that if you do ADB USB, what you can do now is if you can plug, you can plug your, your device back in your, back your, uh, your USB and in, back into your device. And what you can do now is do ADB devices Okay, so now you see that the list of devices, this is the USB, of course. And if you hit, if you do ADB USB, you're going to get a little error, more than one device and emulator. So what you need to do is just restart the service, okay? So you do ADB dash kill server, ADB start dash server. And that has restarted the ADB. And now you can do ADB USB once again, and it'll restart in USB mode. And you can do AS ADB devices, and now your device is now connected back via USB. All right. So now that that's the way, and then of course you can always just restart your device or pull it out and turn the Wi-Fi off and stuff like that, and then and it'll just it'll connect via USB like that as well. But if you want to do it properly and you don't want to actually restart your device and all that, just simply go and kill the server, restart it, and then. Uh, Put the, put the command in ADB USB and that will go ahead and restart your device in USB mode. All right. So like I said before, just a, a cool little feature that I like to use and just want to share with you guys. And if you uh, don't like to have the USB or, or as little as <laughs> cords as possible, then I'm sure you're going to find this useful as I lose you do. All right. Thanks for watching guys.